Hello, Gabrielle. It's Tuesday. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Twin Flame Tuesdays, you all. So Gabrielle and I are wound up. It is is we are just love Twin, Twin Flame Tuesdays because we get to hang out together and play. <laughs> I know. In different locations or the same location. <laughs> a different location or the same location. We're going to talk location at the end of the show. But um Today, we are going to be talking about going grow, going through or growing through. We are going to talk about that. But first, neither one of us has really had time to like do our grounding and centering and all of that. So we're just going to take a minute and do that and let everybody just join us, right? And I've got my dolomite, am I saying it correctly? That I, that I ordered because it was speaking to me at the museum last week. We were walking by the, the case. And I'm like, Gabrielle, there's something here that I walk by and it like stops me in my tracks. And you're like, it's this one. And so we, we went up and sure enough, it was, and they didn't have any to sell. So you, you got me this piece um, through your supplier and it came last night and I tried to like set it on like the back of my desk and it literally spoke to me and said closer. <laughs> and I'm like, I have got a bossy crystal. <laughs> So um, she, she wanted to be closer. She wanted to be closer, and so um, so we can talk to some about what this crystal does after we let's let's ground though, and that's what the crystal helps do. One of the things. So so yeah. So if, if y'all are ready, let's just relax for a moment and drop into our heart spaces. And what we're gonna do <clears throat> is we're just going to let the light shine down come down through all of your chakras starting with the stellar gateway the soul star the causal chakra feel it coming on down bright golden white light unconditional love flowing down now brighter and brighter now down through the crown the third eye you can feel it coming now the throat chakra and the high heart and the heart feel it expanding through the heart Now the solar plexus, you feel it expanding there. Now the navel and the sacral, you feel it expanding there. Now our root chakra and our earth star and grounding us all the way to mother earth who invited us here who accepts the light once again, because this is our very beingness, as we are open to and allowing it to come in. And Mother Earth now holds it tightly, grounding us to the core of the crystalline grid, and we just let the light come in. You can feel the <clears throat> Feel the bright light shining down, grounding you. The light comes down, and you can feel it expanding outward as well. Now, engulfing you. So it's coming down, connecting you to Mother Earth, and spreading out, surrounding you. unconditional love, your very beingness. Balancing, centering, rotating, calibrating each of the chakras as it comes through. Your divine feminine, divine masculine energy being balanced. Mother Earth holding you tightly. 
protective field, like a warm, loving glove surrounding you. And now we have more energy coming back up, being projected back up from Mother Earth, coming up to our heart space. As we realize all we have been, all that we will be, and all that we will experience. And we show gratitude. And we send love and light to all those we know and we don't know for the best and highest good of all the world. And so it is, and so it is, and so it shall be. Namaste. I know I was <laughs> a lot of energy coming in. I know, and then you you weren't even outside. I just felt Mother Earth. She was sitting a warm, a warm breeze, just reassuring that she's there with us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This crystal um, grounds us. It comforts us. It brings ease. Balances our emotions. Opens our heart, heart chakra. Um, it's one that, one of the things that we found when I looked it up, um, it's for those who live alone, <laughs> brings tranquility and, um, like love and affection and inspiration and solace and to those who live alone. I mean, it's, it's literally a stone for one who lives alone. Um, and last night, you know, I got this out of the mailbox when I got home. Yes. She had messaged me about it. So I got it out of the mail, opened it up. It was sitting here, insisting on sitting close to me. I was meditating with Annette and I said, I'm going to the zoo. And Annette goes, what? I said, I love zoos. There's a zoo in this town and I've not been to the zoo. And she's like, okay. <laughs> if she wants to do Twin Flame Tuesdays at the zoo next week. And so, and, uh, and, but I had no clue, you know, that, um, and then I'm like, there's all kinds of museums in this town. I love museums. I'm going to the museums in this town, you know? And so I had no clue, but just all of a sudden it was just this whole, what, what am I doing? You know, I, I'm, I'm getting out. I'm going to see what's here. I'm, you know, which is me anyway. I mean, that's, that's what I do anyway, normally, but it's not, as you know, not what I've been doing. Of course, I've, I got sick, you know, I've been going through, I'm still got the scars. I'm still, you know, still healing, but, um, and I have to go at a, a pace I can go and, and all of that. But it was like, you need to go to the zoo. I mean, seriously, it was, it was, I heard, I said, I need to go to the zoo. You know, it was like, and she's like, what? I said, something just said, go to the zoo. And, you know, which I'm used, I'm clairaudient and I'm used, but it was a different voice. Well, it was the same voice that said closer. It was this stone, you know? So this crystal is like, well, what is bossy? <laughs> but it's an amazing crystal. So I've already had people calling me this morning and saying, so you got a new crystal. And I've like, I've sent in no pictures of it and they can feel the power of it over the phone. Which of course is how we ordered it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you pulled it up, I said, I want that one. And you said, Well, you're in luck, it's the only piece he's got. And I said, Good, because I want that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say something in regards, because when you just said that they brought up so much. Um, we talked about the inner child meditation that we did last time. Um, I hear what I hear is your inner child coming out. Oh, yeah. she's, she's coming out to play and that crystal is bringing out it's not really i feel i really feel more of a inner child energy from that crystal you should look more into it and see if it says anything about the inner child it because, met. It met. okay yeah. okay because i feel like it's you know how you know how children are they can be bossy like like no come here you know you know how children are they can well, be bossy yeah it is bossy this crystal, <laughs> i mean none of my crystals talk to me and okay and everything and his brother talks to me and i know people are like okay we're moving off this show now well we <laughs> resonate with you then you no know? um we just don't resonate with you if that's yeah. you yeah. know i mean i'll have i'm drawn to crystals i feel their energy all of that stuff yeah. i don't have any of them that say uh-uh closer <laughs> you know I've never, i don't have any of them that say you need to go to the zoo <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I love this crystal. Yes. But yeah, I've already had one person that was on the phone with this morning said, send me a picture. They literally pulled over on the side of the road on their way to work and said, hold on, I got to pull over. Whoa, the energy yeah. on this crystal. Yeah. I mean, that is how, yeah, it's powerful. Yeah, it is. It is. And I'm wearing my effluent from the zoo. Yes, folks, yeah. I know elephant. I, I know. <laughs> uh, I've always called them effluents. It's a yes. thing I do. So um, so that's the yes. inner child in me, too. Yes, the inner child. Yeah, and it's beautiful. That's beautiful. So that when you said you couldn't really just explore, you're getting into the energy now of wanting to explore, wanting to be that inner child. The inner child wants to come out and have fun and do new things and go places and stuff like that. So when you said in the meditation, it was hard for you to embody it. You're actually embodying it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, um, of course, I've been clearing a lot of stuff still yeah. too that is helping with that. You yeah. Know, I've had some more clearing work done, mm -hmm. more, um, more things being released. And as, as we do this stuff, you know, you and I talk about how, and this is something that the practitioner I've been working with that we talked about as much as we do ourselves, we still need that mirroring. That's why you and I work together and, and why twin flames need to work together. You know, they, they need to get to that conscious awareness of no, let's don't repel one another because we're mirroring, but let's, it's and triggering, but let's use that as our quantum leap here, because that is that is the very people we seek out to help us is because we need that mirroring, because as much as I've known, I've known what energies were there or had a clue about them. I feel them as I feel them with other people. But when it's your own, it's just like when you're a doctor, you don't write your own scripts. Yeah. Yeah. You need that mirroring. You need that. And I literally was told last night afterwards when I was doing meditations then with Annette, I was told you've been, you've removed so much of this yourself, but you've exhausted yourself doing it. You had, you had to have help getting the rest of it, you know? And so, I mean, there were generational curses and I mean, yeah. things that were, they were heavy yeah. Yeah. and I had to be very grounded myself while these were being lifted and yeah. It was a very, um, and I'm still integrating that all that happened. I mean, I literally, um, I literally left the camera and went into the bedroom and just literally just fell apart, you know, and then came back and it was like, go anywhere. I'm right here. And I'm like, well, I knew you wouldn't go anywhere, but I wouldn't go fall apart right here either. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, and it didn't last long and it doesn't last long because yeah. we now we're, we spiraled up and yeah. so we're as a year ago, I yeah. probably would have cried for hours. Yeah, yeah. It would probably, it was less than, it was less than five minutes. Yeah, yeah, but I it, told you. Yeah. yeah, but it was, um, it was gut wrenching. I yeah. mean, it was, it, it was like, it was literally wailing. Yeah. yeah. And it was like uncontrollable wailing. I mean, it was this, this pain that was just like, there was, you know, and, and it's not like the first time I've done it, you know. Yeah, of course. I've yeah. done much of it on my own, much yeah. of that work on my own. Yeah. And, but it, it, we do spiral out of it faster yeah. and faster. And you notice I said spiral and I'm doing this. Yeah. Because, because as we heal and as we become higher and higher vibrational, and again, it, that higher doesn't mean better. It just means out of denser energies. We do heal faster. So this is something to don't be afraid of and don't think, oh, my God, I don't want to go through that. It gets easier. It gets well. Uh, easier may not be the right word. It gets faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. I, think, I think I think easier too. Easier is the right word because you have a different perception of it now. You you're not the energy. You're not going. I ask people all the time in my lives: Are you going through it, or are you going through it? If you're going through it, it's taking you through the trenches. You don't see another way out. You don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you're going through it, you're seeing everything is working out for you in divine order. You're knowing that I got to process this. I'm feeling these emotions, feeling this energy. I'm glad to be releasing this. I'm glad it finally came to the surface for me to release. And then I can go ahead on and transmute this energy and use it for my highest good. So it's, it's a different energy. So it, it does get easier because even though you're, you're dealing it actually... It's funny because at this point of, of evolution of where we are, um, it, it gets to the works get the work is harder. 
it's harder work because you're doing generational curse work. It first yes. starts off as just doing your own internal, your own internal healing work, whatever you've had to deal with in this lifetime or whatever lifetime. Then, but it gets, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. It gets to those ancestral wounds, those other wounds, and so. With the level of awareness and, and, and bandwidth that you have, that you always talk about, the ban inner energetic bandwidth that you have, you have a better understanding of how to navigate this energy. So it does get easier. You know, I'm not saying that you're yeah. not going to feel the emotions and feel the, the gut yeah. wrenching stuff, but you have a different perspective and you understand it more. So when you understand something more, you're able to move through something more. Right. It was it was the same practitioner that called this morning to check. And, yeah. it was, and I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I, I went to Blues Night last night. You did what? Of course, I'm like, yeah, uh, the, you know, because I immediately when we, we got off, I, you know, I had like four messages. Are you coming or not? You know, are you coming or not? And I'm like, well, I wasn't going to. It's like, why not? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Why am I not there? Yeah. You know, why am I not there? Because that's what I do. It's on my calendar. As a matter of fact, I have a standing appointment with this this practitioner. We not usually for the reason that it was like yesterday. But, um, it, I, it's usually wrapped up in time for me to go to Monday Night Blues. Yeah. So last night we knew we were going to do this healing work specifically. Yeah. It, was, it was like, okay, this Monday night is all about you. You don't yeah. get to back out of it. It's yeah. all about you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I managed to postpone that for about the first hour of the session. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I managed to talk about everything else, you know, but not on purpose. It was yeah. because those were things that, because those things are about me too. Because as you know, I have, I have a crew and yeah. my dealing with the crew is about me you know yeah. and so so it was all of that stuff and so um so we were working up to to that and so yeah. but yeah it, we got done and it was like all these messages like where are you where are you why are you know and i'm like why why am i not there yeah you know so i went and fixed the makeup you know from from you know going yeah. through it yeah i know going through it yeah. <laughs> and um, out the door I went. I didn't stay a long time. You know, I stayed long enough to say hi to everybody, go yeah. up to the bar and get my Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm putting yeah. my reputation here, you know. <laughs> yes, folks, I, I was drinking diet. I wasn't drinking, drinking. And, um, yeah, and so I listened to music for a bit and then came on home and did meditations the rest of the night until bedtime. But, um, so, yeah, it, it's... Um, it, but it is, that is what we're doing, is it was, I, I, I don't mind saying... Um, much of my past lifetime is ancient Egyptian stuff. And um, I am a very high vibrational being and that's recognized in every lifetime. And so I had, I had ton of um, tons of curses, you know, just literally curses. And, and I don't see the way this practitioner does. I don't see the way a Reiki practitioner does. I, you know, that's not how I see but um, I could literally see the faces of the um, like the priestesses and, and all of that stuff that had put the curses on me over. I could see them and I, and I could feel the, you know, the, the energy saying we are not going. And, and I could and I could feel the, the red cape master saying, yes, you will go. And I could feel my own light body saying, yes, it is time you go now. And it was like, and I was like, yeah, yeah, you're out of here. You know, you're out of here. And so it was like all of us together saying, no, this is no more. But until you're at that conscious awareness and you're holding that frequency, you know, you're not ready to do those things. And so that's, that's what we were talking about earlier, where you're ready to do what work you're ready to do and how you do it with your relationships, with your own work, with your twin flame, all of that depends on where you're at on your own journey here and there is no right place wrong place there is no somebody's at a higher level there's none of that we all teach the students there just is where you are yeah. and i can guarantee you given as deep into this as i am as far into this as i am talk to me two weeks from now and it'll be like, oh man, I didn't know anything two weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's exponential. Yeah. The deeper you get into it, the the more. But yeah, the but, more your consciousness expands. Right, that's what it is. Yeah. But so there's there's no end to it, you yeah. know. And there's no there's no putting the stuff back in the box. So there's none of that. And there's no avoiding the journey either. So yeah. And I want to talk about that. I want to hear the topic you just said when you talked about curses, because people might want to know what curses are in general. Sure. Sure. 
Um, as you know, everything is energy and vibration. So, you know, these are different terminologies for different things. Right. But a curse is simply someone putting their imprint, their energy on you in some kind of form of fashion for whatever reason to, to hurt you or any kind of ill will towards you. They've legitimately detached some of their energy, put that towards you. And you have to be, that's why we have to be aware of our own vibration. We have to know our own energy and then we have to learn how to detect other energies, whether if it's from this life, when we started doing this energetic work like this, we started getting into those generational curses. We started getting into those those wounds and stuff that are there that people then put other energy on us, or just our family in general has has those curses. So right. we have to release those energies. These are all energies. So when we say curses, to demystify it a little bit more, it's energy. It's people it's putting their energy imprinting, putting like hooks into you, and you have to cut those cords. Send the energy back to them for the highest vibration. I never send any energy back for the negative because what does that serve? We're all in this together for the highest vibration for them to use and to claim back mine. Any energy I had attached to them as well to claim back mine for the highest vibration of me to use. So, yeah, right. I just want to talk to them the curses part since you said something about that. Well, and um, some people do it purposefully. Mm -hmm. And so that is that is more curse. Yeah. yeah. Purposefully. Um, some people... Some people um, block you, cause energetic disturbances for you, and they're unaware that they're doing it because they're they just they're feeling what they're feeling and they're putting that energy out towards you, and it's not intentional. Yeah. So yeah. These things that were moved, that were removed last night, these were intentional. Intentional. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and that's and I think the things that have been unintentional are the things that I've been able to deal with on my own mm -hmm. because. We're not afraid to face the things. I mean, it's hard and it's painful, yeah. but it's not the same when you're facing the unintentional because mm -hmm. those are the things that we forgive ourselves. We forgive others. Yeah. For. You know, I teach that heavily. We've got to forgive everything. We've got to yeah. forgive everything. Yeah. There's a difference, though, when you come face to face with someone who is pur purposefully, even if it's face to face with yeah. where, wherever in the time, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. face to face with someone who purposefully had ill will towards you mm -hmm. and they had energetic intent mm -hmm. for bad to happen to you. Mm -hmm. And words are energy. Yeah. That's where I know it sounds mumbo jumbo and hocus pocus and all that, but people who use words to speak ill towards you, intent towards you, there is power in that because words are energy. Yeah. And so now do we have power against it yes clear our energy yeah. keep our energy field intact and clear our own energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, that, but that's about knowing about how to handle relationships in yeah. a relationship we inadvertently think like when our our partner or our friend or whoever hurts our feelings and we and we think you know you know if they felt that too you know then they would understand well we mm -hmm. just Put that energy back on them without realizing it because mm -hmm. it wasn't it's not like we really want them to feel what we're yeah. feeling but but our way of processing it is well if they could feel that too they would understand you yeah. know what yeah. we send out and especially if we say it out loud yeah. and sometimes we do because even if we're just in a room by ourselves you know maybe we don't say it to another person but we we, we say it out loud ourselves we're like you know if that person only felt what I feel. They get it. Mm -hmm. Well, then we put the energy out there verbally for them to, and no intention there, no ill will there. But that is where we're not being intentional with our energy. But yet, but yet we have sent an energy out mm -hmm. that does do harm yeah. if that person's energy field is open. Mm -hmm. And I am, and I am someone who leaves my energy field pretty darn open because mm -hmm. of what, just because of who I am. Mm -hmm. And now I have, it's, it's closed and unprotected in mm -hmm. many ways, much more than I ever have been in my life, which is why I'm healthier than I've ever been. But I've always been open mm -hmm. because of my very nature. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing is we have to learn how to protect our, and be closed, but not closed. Yeah. Close like open, open, closed system. Yeah, be closed so we are still emotional, feeling, loving beings, yes. but not 
closed, but not so open that we get ourselves hurt. Yeah. There's there's a balance there. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I was just agreeing. I was just agreeing. It's definitely a balance. Um, protecting your energy, setting those energetic boundaries um, with inter with entities or you know with people in general or anything like that is very important. That's where you know it's pretty. It's just it's just really knowing your power and standing in it. It's like knowing I know who I am. I that's why it's so important to travel and learn your own internal universe. Learn how you are connected to the grand scheme of things. Because when you start to learn more and more about yourself, you have more confidence in your energy and who you are. And when you have like when people ask me all the time, how do you get rid of negative entities and stuff like that? How do you, you know, how do you not deal with those entities? Like I have a protection course on there that tells you everything that goes over everything about protecting your energy. Oh. But to get to the simplest terms of it, know your power and stand in it. When you know your power, yeah. holding your frequency and standing in it, those other vibrational beings or entities or whatever else cannot break that barrier. They have to live by the laws of the universe just like everything else does. So it, sometimes it's the hardest thing is because I don't know my power. Well, learn about yourself. Discover about yourself. Pull back what isn't yourself anymore and discover who you are so you can stand in your power and stand in your frequency. And that's protecting your energy. And it's the societal programming that has told us that all of this is mumbo jumbo or witchcraft or bad or or whatever that keeps us from learning this stuff about ourselves. And all it is is learning to manage our energetic bodies mm -hmm. and really learning to manage it is so much simpler, but you have to learn it before you know that because really learning to manage it is just letting it in. Yeah. Just letting it in. Letting it in. But until you understand that, until you get to that point, and again, there is nothing wrong with that. But it's like it's like you talked about this so, so simple a child can understand. Yeah. Um something sometimes, you know, the better you know a subject, the simpler you can explain it. Yeah. You know yeah. When yeah. You're learning something, it's like you explain it, but and you may do a great job of explaining yeah. it, but yeah. still it's a kind of a complex explanation. Yeah. Then the more and more you explain it, the more and more clear it becomes because you know it better yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once you do this long enough, you get to a point where you're like, hold on a second. Let me just sit down and just let all this light in. And then it's like, whoosh. And it's like, now you get it. You yeah. said it and you said it and you said it. Guess what grounding is? Just sit down, just like we did at this beginning, and just just let me come in because me and you, we're one. We're the same thing. And Mother Earth has invited us here. And and so just just sit there and just let me come in. And you can feel, then you just and it just keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming. And there is no end to it. Because we are omnipresent light beings that want to have an earth tactile experience, not, there's no division. There's no, there's no separation. That is who Gabrielle is. She is that, that light being. And so when you, when you can open up and let that in, it's like, Oh, wait a second. What is that? And now integrating that, accepting that, understanding that. That's where the work comes in. That, that, that's, that's the work. That, <laughs> well, and <laughs> It takes a bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And what we were talking about before was what gratitude really is. And and you said turn the camera on, turn the camera on. So yeah. so if it's okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just and just say that while it, while it's still with me. While we are letting that light come in, that is unconditional love. Gratitude religion society everything has taught us that the being that created us wants all this reverence and thanking you and all of this stuff that's not it at all it is universal law it's plain and simple it's energy for energy love wanted to feel loved back if it only put out and I taught this last week and, and I'm like, and Pam was like, Pam, where'd that come from? That was good. You know, when we were done, you know, if you only put out me, 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 all you get back is me, 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 me. And it gets lonely. 
that's what love was doing. And so it replicated itself and it still only put out, you know, it was still the same thing. So then it divided into divine feminine, and divine masculine. And so these energies then started putting out creative energies, different energies, yet it was the same, the same frequency, the same, it was still unconditional love, but it was coming back in a new way. And so that's energy for energy. So that's how universal law is. That's what it, okay. Then we dropped into the denser energies. We didn't know that that would happen because until it happened, you didn't, until you've had chocolate, you don't know what chocolate is. Okay. Now we're coming out of those denser energies. As we're coming out, we are now able to return energy for energy. So now that we are able to understand, now that we're able to feel, now that we're able to let that light in, all we're being asked to do, we're not being asked to worship anything. We're not being asked to beg and plead, oh, please give me such and such. We're not being asked to attract in all this stuff. All we're being asked to do is let all the light that is us come in with the story that is written because we have a story because it knows what it wants to come here and do. It is us. We decided in oneness so that we could keep all of the frequencies up and and harmonious is why we decide the story ahead of time in oneness. That's why we do that. It's for the sacred geometry of it. So we stay within the parameters of unconditional love and we don't get back in the denseness. So there, there's a reason for it. It's not so that we boss people. It's not so we boss people around, you know. So, so we just let that love come in. And then all we do is return that energy back. Don't just take it in and yet, oh, it's all about me. Yeah. But, but, okay, how do I want to be treated? That's how I want to be treated. Give it to me. Mm-hmm. And then, but freely return it back. And the universe is like, yes, she's got it. She's feeling it. And, and then we've got this free flow exchange of unconditional love going back and forth. Boy, I can, I can feel the energy right now. And that is how we are ex- existing as one being. And that is what the gratefulness is. It's not, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's, I feel you. I understand. You are unconditional love. You are coming down. You are, you are me. You want this beautiful life. You want to experience this. You want me to experience it so you can experience it. Wow. So we're going to do what? This is okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to the zoo. Hot damn. Let's go to the zoo. You went, oh, okay. Dance. You betcha. Let's dance. You know what? What else do you want to do? You know how? and, And then you get excited about that and it feels your excitement. It feels that you're happy. It feels the joy. It feels... And it's like, yes, yes, yes. That's the vibrational frequency that matches and that comes back up. And so you attract more of it back down. It's not wanting to withhold anything from you, but it is energy. It can only give more, let more in, bring more down. It can only do it if you let it. Because if you're putting out, if you're putting out denser energy, it can't, it can't let good energy or higher energy or whatever it's universal law it's not that it doesn't want to it's been waiting for us to get into the frequency to get on to get on the frequency yeah yeah let to let ourselves love ourselves love has been waiting this is what i fell apart over last night love has been waiting for us to let it love us and before that could happen, we had to love it back. It's not gratitude. We had to simply return the vibration. We had to simply return the vibrational, the vibrational frequency back. I feel, I feel it. I want this. What do I want for myself? How do I want to be treated? I want, I want love. And therefore, I return the love. And that's what, that's what ourselves have been waiting for. You know, we've been talking about what is self-love? What is love yourself? What what the f- are we talking about? That's what we're talking about. And that's what the universe has been waiting for, for us to get up into frequency after having fallen. It, that's, what, that's what the twin flames are waiting for, is each of us are waiting for the other one to get into the frequency for love 
to recognize love and to love each other back and to let each other love each other back. Love love. For love to finally love itself. Yeah. Because, because like energies attract like energy. And until you let it, but you can't make it until it is in that frequency and that level of consciousness and accepts it, there's nothing you can do. All the universe, all and all the universe, all that means is all your light body, your higher self, and everybody else, <laughs> all, all their light bodies, all it's been able to do is patiently wait for us to get it and to get into frequency. And so that's what we mean by are you going through it? Are you growing through it? Where are you at with all of this at conscious awareness? <laughs> Keep building yourself, keep keep doing all of this, keep growing yourself, whether you're talking about your twin flame relationship, whether your twin flame is here or on the other side, you still have this to go through. And or whether you're talking about your family relationships or your own relationship with yourself, because you've got to do this first and let the light in and have that. But you don't have to now there's the mistake about you have to be totally healed yourself though before you can do this. Yeah. You don't have to be, you, you can do this together. So, all right, uh, I'm shutting up now. I've said the parts that you wanted me to say, you talk about all of it. <laughs> no, I'm glad you brought me up to growing through it and going through it. Um, and yes, yeah, so that's one thing that me and my boyfriend do now. Um, we've been both healing. I've been on this healing journey, healing myself. And like I tell people, you know, you can't change people. And I had to start descending in my vibration. So when you start descending in your own in your own vibration, I tell people one or two things are going to happen. The people around you are, are going to vibrationally adjust to that. Or if not, then they will leave your life and you have to be okay with that. So I've made a decision with myself is doing this healing work that that's how I'm moving in every arena in my life with anybody in my life. And so um, my boyfriend has started doing the healing work on his own, on his own terms and stuff like that. And so now we have this thing um, that we say, are we going through it or are we growing through it? Every time we have some kind of dispute or a little argument or whatever. Um, and the reason why I even say little, because now when we do have those disputes and arguments, it's not like they used to be. At the beginning, they were chaotic as freak because we was in a lot of trauma and a lot of chaos. Yeah. So um, as we peel back those layers and, and, and get to have a more understanding and communi communicate more among each other, let us know what we're feeling, how things are going on. It's a more calmer path, even in the midst of chaos. Um, and so um, we'll say at the end of it, are we going through it? Are we growing through it? If we're growing through it, we are learning more about ourselves, healing these different aspects of ourselves, talking about it, having a conversation, becoming aware, bringing it to our awareness. And we're going through the process of learning and growing together as a unit. If um, growing together as a unit, if we're going through it, and therefore, it's time for us. If, we, if one day we say we're going through it, then as we know that we're energetically at a standstill and we don't plan on growing through this relationship anymore. So we are going to cut ties and go our own way with the highest vibration for each other. You know, no bad feelings. It's just this is the end of our journey together. So we um, and I love that. And we me and both agree on that. And we love that now. You know, well, we're like, OK, we had a little dispute right now. We're growing through it. We're, lear we're learning, you know. And that's the beautiful thing because when you're able to be in a relationship, twin flame or not, you know what I mean? And you're able to, because any relationship is going to reflect back, whether it's a twin flame or a partner, whoever else, they're going to reflect back to you. And relationships are some of the most transformational um, catalysts for us. Relationships in general, yes. Absolutely. That's yes. what them is because yeah, the mirror, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, there are mirrors. That is yeah. what... That, that's what relationships serve because yeah, yeah. that's what that's what relationships were started for yeah. that's why the universe which was all alone created a relationship yeah. was to have a mirror that could love back yeah it's like back yeah, yeah. love back yeah, yeah instead of just sending out its own energy and getting its own energy back which is empty which is the void yeah, yeah. the void in the beginning there was a void it's just love sending out love back to itself. There's no. That's I mean, to, to feel, to vibrate that off. To, yeah. That, yeah. And that's the void. Yeah. But then, then, you know, whenever there's, there's that vibration then returns back to you, mm -hmm. then that, then, then you've got the attraction coming, the back and forth going. And and that's all. It's all relationships. But yeah, so I love that you all are marrying each other that way. Yeah, go on. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was, that was a little bug. I had to tell it to go. 
<laughs> you know, you know they love. I, I didn't get to the point that while my head like, look, my energy fill is up. Don't come over here with that. Just go over there. Don't bug me. Don't bug me. I like that one. Um, but yes, so I mean, it's just all about, and when you're with someone and you're able to reflect, be that reflection, that, that conscious reflection for each other, that's where the healing and growth takes place. Place That's where like me and you, I was thinking about when we were at the, um, at the museum, um, Petrified Forest, um, like our energy just matches so well. Like we feed off one another, want to say this and want to say that. And it's just like yeah. back and forth, you know? And, and that's how partnership, whether it's friendship, whether it's relationship, that's the beauty of having those dynamics. It's not to say, get to get in victim mode. That's what, that's what happens. We both will get in victim mode and we'll say, well, this person is saying this to me. This person is doing it to me. Me, 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 me. You know what I mean? And you have to be aware that people are only going to reflect out what's going on inside of them. So it's not saying that you have to take any abuse that they're doing and just say, well, I understand they have trauma. No, 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 no. Y'all need to work through this, not just say, oh, this is an excuse. No, we need to work through this. Why is this coming up for you? Are you able to identify? You know, ask yourself these questions. And one thing I wanted to touch on when you were saying about, um, I did a post yesterday about um, your soul purpose and about embodying this light, this light energy. I let our, our higher self, the blueprint, you know, we live in that energy. So how do you discover your soul purpose? I did a TikTok on three different questions to ask yourself, discover your soul purpose. And one of them was kind of like the questions you had. Um, who am I? Like, who am I? Like, sit for a minute with yourself without any distractions or anything else that is going on. Ask yourself, who am I? And just really sit with yourself. You might get an answer. You might not get an answer right away. But even if you don't get an answer right away, throughout the day, I want you to be conscious and ask yourself in everything that you do, who am I? You're washing dishes. Who am I? If you're eating, who am I? Who am I? And then if you see that there might be certain instances inside of yourself, certain things that you don't really find attractive, that you don't want to embody anymore, start asking yourself, well, who do I want to be? And a prime example I gave is, you know, one thing I've been working on with having a toddler and then him being this high vibration, dealing with my own traumas and healing those traumas. I had to ask myself, you know, who am I? I don't want to be this mom that, that hollers and scream all the time, you know. So mm -hmm. I need to look at those energetic wounds and I need to show up in the energy of the mom, the body that I want to be. And you start to embody in that energy, you know. So embody the energy. Who am I? Okay. If that energy doesn't match, well, let me, who do I want to be? Then set up in the energy of who you want to be. And then the last energy is what what magic or what do I want to create in this world? What is the beauty for all? What is what what do you want to bring in this reality? We all have big visions. If we allow ourselves to expand and think, what is the beauty we want to create in this reality for everyone? Yeah. So yeah, that's how you discover your soul purpose. You have to go in and do the work to ask yourself these questions. <laughs> and then be open to what yeah. the answers are and accept the answers you yeah. get. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. That's there the are thing. people that will ask the questions. Yeah. And don't yeah. trust the answers. Oh, they'll get the answers. And yeah. then it'll be, well, I'm being that. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> or they won't trust that. They'll, they'll get it or be like, no, I'm not being that. Or they won't trust. Well, I don't really trust myself. Your intuition is like a muscle. You have to strengthen it. You have to constantly go into that. When, when, when your ego is being loud and rambunctious and saying, Whatever it's saying, go into the subtle voice. Just every time you go into the subtle voice, the subtle energy, you're strengthening your intuition. And before you know it, that intuition gets more louder because the little ego is still going to be there saying they're having his little temper tantrum. It gets louder. It gets louder in the sense of you know your energy. Not louder in as far as, you know, like being abrasive like the ego. But it just gets louder in the sense of, I know this feels right. I'm going with this. It's just the knowing. What happens with me is um, whenever I doubt my own, whenever I don't want to apply it myself, and it's not that I don't, it's not ever that I don't want to apply. It is really that what if I'm wrong? You know, I'll get, hold on a second. If you were working with someone else, I'm like, oh, never mind. Because I know if I were working with someone else, I know those voices. I know that feeling. I know that. I know my intuition. I know it. Uh -huh. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it at all. If I were yeah. working with you and I got it, I mean, you yeah. know, I don't hesitate. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, hold on. I got it. You know, and I yeah. don't hesitate. Yeah. So I'll get, hold, I'm, it, the, literally I'll get, 
what, what? Just pretend like it's somebody else. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got the answers. I know the answers, you know. But so that's what I have to do because when it's with myself, and we, but we do have to be aware of our filters. We yeah. do have, yeah. to, we have to be aware. But I know, I know my intuition so well. I recognize it so well. And so whenever I, whenever that pops in and it's like, no, seriously, really, you're going to, you know, what if that's not right? It, then it'll, it comes back around and says, seriously, if somebody else were here, and you just got that. What would you do with it? Well, I'd tell them to run with it. I know that I know that I know. And they're like, okay, so why are you doubting it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was taught, I was programmed by my family that don't believe in yourself like that. You believe in yourself too much. You're too sure of yourself. You're too... Uh, now out in public you're supposed to be that way because you're supposed to perform and you're supposed to be straight a student and you're supposed to be all these things but here at home you know you know you, you can't be that confident don't believe in yourself don't believe in yourself that way here yeah. so when it comes to like dealing with all of you and everything you see me I don't, I don't i don't back down for a second you ask me something i'm like i i know it i tell you i don't hesitate mm -hmm. me alone I get it and i'm like oh what if that's not right and literally and literally i immediately get what if you weren't by yourself what if you were answering someone else and i'm like okay all right and so now i got a feeling that this this thing is going to be saying what what you're not by yourself keep going <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a reflector to for you to bounce off of. <laughs> I mean, this is my new mirror i think it's saying you know, yeah, forget mirror. about forget about a partner in life that I, i'm it <laughs> Just put me in your pocket. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yes. And, and that's, that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of this work. And that's why we love doing, you know, Twin Flame Tuesdays. And we, just, we don't just talk about Twin Flames, you know. We talk about stuff because everything is related. You know, the whole Twin Flame applies. journey is related. Yeah. It all applies. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and I kind of skipped over. Uh, I did talk about, like, in the beginning, you know, energy. when It, um, it replicated itself. And then itself divided into twin flame, divine feminine, divine masculine. We are going back to understanding oneness. Well, that step before we get there is twin flame has got, we've got to heal the rifts. And so that is why we have to deal with twin flame so heavily in this incarnation we're in. And one of the things we were talking about earlier, and, and we can get to this now, is how wherever you're at in the journey is just where you're at. And if you're, if your conscious awareness, if your understanding of it all, where, wherever you're at, if you're at the beginning of it, conventional wisdom is how you're going to handle the relationship. But as you come more and more into understanding your intuition and, and feeling and hearing or what, however it is, if you start getting guidance that is counterintuitive to what societal programming says or your best friend tells you or someone else, go with your guidance. Go with your intuition because you're being guided to deal with our twins according to what the individual journey is. And whatever it is that's going to help you heal, help the twin heal, help the relationship heal, whatever that means, that's individualized. So just because so-and-so said, listen, I'd pack that crap up, send it to them and tell them never come back or whatever, maybe that is what their guidance is and maybe that is the conventional wisdom or whatever whatever but if your guidance isn't that then that's not what you do you trust your guidance so maybe maybe uh, i i said that kind of maybe said that too fast maybe you may, maybe want to elaborate on that no 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 you did good you did good it's just it's just trusting your own internal guidance system yeah. You know, um, sometimes our internal guidance system will go, will go against the grain of what society, because you're living in a in an energy of of knowing yourself. You're living in the energy of not just faith, not blind faith. It's a faith of knowing. You know, even though this physical reality, fear, of false evidence appearing real, what is the reality? This physical reality might be showing you a different aspect, but the energy behind it is a different energy that hadn't manifested in this physical reality yet. So you're reading your higher self is guiding you with the, it's really like a bird. Like from this human aspect, we only see what's right here in front of us. A bird flies above, above us and see the higher aspect of it. Your higher self is seeing this higher aspect of it that you might not understand in this physical um, 
body, but you're listening to that internal guidance system because you know it knows more than what your conscious mind can understand at this point in time. So it's really about transcending the conscious mind and trusting your super conscious, your higher self, the God within. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's about being able to hold your own frequency because you've got to be to the point where you can hold your own frequency and pressure around you or your understanding of how relationships work. Because if, if you're not holding your own frequency, if you fall into the energy of, well, I'm letting this person disrespect me, then, then it doesn't matter what your guidance is. If you fell into that energy of I'm letting myself be disrespected, then that's the energy you're putting out and that is the energy you're getting back. So until you're holding that frequency of, hold on, this is my guidance. I'm holding my frequency. I am being authentic to me. Until you can hold that, then yes, you're going, you're going to do things differently. But once you can hold that frequency, then then it's different. Am, am, am I making sense? No, yeah, you're making a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, it's different. It's different. Yeah. When you hold your frequency, it's because your energy is more, it's, it's the masculine version of it. It's, it's because the most, the masculine energy is more focal point. The, the divine feminine is more vast because it's, it's the divine of everything of creation. So you're learning how to take this big energy that you are and focus it down and to be able to will this energy into whatever direction for your highest good and for your blueprint or whatever you came in to do. Instead of allowing your internal environment to cause you to be all chaotic and your energy is just splattered everywhere and you don't know how to. The divine feminine masculine works hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So yeah. it's really about balancing those energies within yourself. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so and until you, if you're not holding that frequency and you're allowing yourself to get any type of chaotic energy and you're putting that out because of I'm, I'm trying to do what my guidance is or what I think my guidance is, you, you're right probably if, you, if you're feeling it. But let's say you think your guidance is, but you're struggling with holding that frequency, then whatever – in, until you can hold that frequency, you're putting out chaotic energy. You're going to continue to get back chaotic energy. You have truly got to hold the frequency of, I know who I am, what I am, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And that doesn't mean that you will get the result you want because you don't control anyone else. But it does mean that the energy that comes back to you overall yeah. will be respectful and the right energy for you and for your best and highest good because the result we want may not be our best and highest good it's not going to be our best and highest good if the other person's energy hasn't come into resonance with ours and and, and that makes a lot of sense and but that's but that goes with the law of attraction that's just the law of attraction bundled up the energy that you put out is the energy that you come back so when you know we first learn about manifesting we're going to manifest all this all these big things or whatever you know it's yeah. really about reverse engineering it you have to let go of that this energy first like okay wow you're aware of law of attraction manifestation wonderful okay you're buying the herbs you're doing everything you have the crystals and everything but when your life is starting to get chaotic because um you're doing all these things this is where the magic is because you're in these dis energies. They're being shaken up to be let go, to be shook up out of you for these manifestations that you have to come on board. So you have to be able to be aware and be and be in awe of the process. Be in the awe of the process. A lot of times we get so hyper focused on the outcome, the outcome, the outcome, you know. And a lot of times the way the universe blesses us is, you know, the outcome might even be better than what we actually, like you said, like we've actually, what our conscious mind can see, we probably can see this big scheme but it's probably even so much more mag magical than what you know we can even imagine so when we're in vibrationally alignment and we let go of these dense energies then we are allowing that energy to come to us we are allowing the love to pour back into us we are opening up for that love and that love's coming in the form of people places finances or whatever else you know so that's just a lot of attraction bundled up in one <laughs> right and and it explains so much what um, because law of attraction gets confusing because of that. You put out the energy, therefore you get it back. But yet when you're focused to put out the energy, that's what you are focused on. But then you're told to stop focusing on it. And so that all gets confusing. Yeah. And, but once you get, but you have to explain that part to get people to this part, which is yeah. 
what we were talking about earlier, that it is confusing until you get to a certain point that you had that aha moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like when you're learning a subject and then one day you're just kind of like, wait a second, I know this yeah. and you don't know how you got there. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. It's what it really comes down to is you don't get focused on the outcome because all you're doing is, okay, how do I want to be treated? Mm -hmm. I want all the love I can have, let all the love in, and freely return that love back out. Yeah. And then, because you don't know what stages everything else around you is yeah. at. Yeah. yeah. Because of the butterfly effect, because of what everybody else is yeah. doing, we don't know. Yeah. But our higher self, the rest of us sees it, as you're saying. Yeah. So I've got this. I know our story. I know, I know what we're supposed to be doing. I know what's good for us. I know what we want. I've got it. Mm -hmm. you, you're just returning back. You're, what you're returning back is I trust this process. I trust that this is going to go the way it should. I know you've got this. I know we've got yeah. this. We yeah. are one. Yes. I love you. You love me. Oh my God, it's Barney all over again. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> I love Barney, you. Barney, it's you. I love you. You love me. So we got our We're little love fest going here. Yeah, we got our little love fest going here. But when you do that, then whatever your highest and best good is and maybe it's not what was intended you know because that hasn't done what you're doing you know what was intended for you they're not doing it and there's nothing you can do about that because until until that until that love comes up into the frequency to love you back there's not a damn thing you can do about it, whether it's your kid, whether it's your job, whether it's your best friend, if they're out of resonance with you, they're out of resonance with you. And so you just have to trust that you've got this, hold that frequency and what's good for you and what's that you will be, you will be taken there and they will get there when they get there. And if they get there and you're still in flow with that on your vertical, I mean, horizontal timeline, great. And if you're not, you're not, you know. And right. you, have to be, you have to be okay with the outcome. Yeah. You have to be so hyper focused on the outcome. And that's what we can't release because we get so hyper focused on this is what it's going to be. This is what it is. Nothing else. You know what I mean? I'm manifesting this. Okay. You understand it. You know where you're going. You're steering the ship. But don't get hyper focused when you get so hyper focused on that. You're not allowing for. That's just what you see. You're not allowing with your higher self to bring in all these different different nuances of how stuff can transpire. The how is not our concern. We know that it's going to happen and transpire in the highest good for us. We just keep our vision there, keep our eyes on that, do our part of letting go with no longer service so we can be in vibrationally alignment with ourselves for those things that come into our life to receive that energy. And let go what does not serve us. And sometimes that's the hardest part. We just so focus on this has to happen. This ain't happened this day. This is what well, you're not trusting. You're not allowing. And by trusting, so many people get that mixed up. All that means is you're not putting back the, okay, I love you. You love me. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's, yeah. that's it. It's that yeah. it really is a holy crap. It really is. Yeah. It goes back to so simple a child. Yeah. Just go back and watch Barney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love you. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do a Barney, do a Barney session today. Go, yeah, go, let's just go back and watch go, Barney. Go watch Barney. Go to the inner town, watch Barney. You know, everybody was so happy and we're having fun. You remember Barney? <laughs> I loved Barney. You know, you I didn't watch it, but I loved I loved the little song and I loved Purple and I loved the scores. I, I mean, I, you know, people hate, uh, people are like, oh my God, I'm going to die if I have to watch Barney again. And I'm like, what is wrong with Barney? Barney is. You know, touchy feely and soft. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. what's wrong with Barney? You know, and yeah. people are just yeah. So yeah. I, I'm I'm all good with Barney. I <laughs> I can see why this works for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know in the color purple too. I know why it works for you. The color purple. There you go. There you go. All right, girl. So next week we are going to do our darndest. The plan is we are going to be at the zoo. 
And um, our advice has been we should stay at the zoo. We should do this every week at the zoo. And we should talk twin flame in front of a different animal every week. Like the ostrich with her head in the sand and the tiger for the animal coming out. And I mean, you know, just all kinds of roar. And I, I had, you know, the, the bear. And, you know, I, I had all kinds of suggestions about it when I said, I want to go to the zoo. And I'm going to ask Gabrielle if she wants to go. I mean, the suggestion just started flowing then. <laughs> Yeah, that is the, that is on the agenda next week. Hopefully, we will. That's something. That's the plan. I haven't talked about it with my family yet because we just talked about it before the show. But that is the plan. Next week is for the zoo, and we don't know what animal we'll be in front of. We have to walk the perimeters first and see yeah. what energy is guiding us there. Right. I love zoos, though. So yeah, yeah me and too. I, you know, I love animals. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, but I want to go back. I want to go back to the petrified forest too, and we're going back and doing workshops there too. We got to plan that, and so. Yeah, girl, we're just busy. Yeah, no, we're busy. Yeah, we're just busy. That's why I tell people. People are like, well, you don't, you don't ever text back. You barely. T I'm like, I am busy. Like, do you understand? Like, being an entrepreneur in itself is busy. It's a lot of stuff. But it's not even just that. It's that you're busy doing something that fuels your soul. You know, fuels your soul. We are doing our soul's work. You know what I mean? We're doing what our higher self came here to do. And even though sometimes you know it's like a lot of work. It's not. And sometimes it's not enough hours in a day. It's what feeds us. It's what fuels us. It's what makes us wake up sometime when we ain't haven't had enough sleep to get up and do the next thing. And that's what you should find in life. What fuels your soul, what inspires you, regardless of whatever is going on around you, regardless of how much chaos you know you might have to go through, it still fuels your soul. I got up this morning, of course I had you today. And um, of course I've got, you know, more of the website to build. Yeah. I, you know, it's it's not like I don't have stuff I can see yeah. here. Yeah. It's not the stuff I enjoy. Yeah. 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 The next thing I know, I, I get a reach out and it's like, I'm going to be free at 3.30 my time today. You got time? And I'm like, yeah, I got time. <laughs> then I get it from Canada. Listen, I need, can you feel into such and such for me? And I'm like, well, I can after Gabrielle. Oh, it's going to have to be. And so the next thing I know, it's like, I'm, I'm juggling, like, I don't know how many people this afternoon want me to feel in. And it's like, and I just start lighting up because yeah, I can work on the website. I can I can work on a book. I can do whatever. And and um, so I, I start feeling into okay, am I supposed to do this or am I supposed to work on the book? And they're like, what's lighting you up? Yeah. And I'm like helping the people. And they're like, you can write the book any day. Yeah. You can write the book the day that you sit down and write, and the book lights you up. Right now, you have people that need you and look at you. You're beaming because. The minute that they reached out, you were like, this is who I am. This is what I do. And they're like, so, and you're going to the zoo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, so uh, our lives are, our lives are beautiful. Yeah. And um, it, it is, it is hard when you're by yourself, you know, um, this, whenever, we, you know, a lot nearly teared up, you know, whenever I read that with the stone, you know, I was like, you're not gonna believe it. You're gonna believe what this says. And you were like, you were just laughing. You were laughing because we didn't come across this that last week, whenever we were reading about it. And you and you're like, come on, we gotta find one of these for you because that stone is not letting you leave, you know, and bless you. And so um so yeah, we so we gotta go back and see what else I'm yeah. supposed to have because I know, right? We're I'm walking I'm through there. I'm this stone next too. Yeah, yes. yes. Well, that's what the person that called me said to you. The practitioner was like, I got to have a piece of that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like literally I had to pull their car over and said, oh, my God, when I sent the picture, like, hold on, I had to pull over. I mean, that's how. So this is uh, this is going to become a popular. I, I think we can. Dolomite. Dolomite. If you forget the name, Dolomite. Dolomite. <laughs> Dolomite. Right. And it's magnesium, which does all kinds of health things for you. Too. It makes your hair thicker, your nails thicker, your bones better, helps with your digestive system. I mean, the health benefits of this stone was out of this world. Yeah. But um, in the, the pink, the soft pink, yeah. that's, that's Archangel Shemuel opening your heart chakra. Just say. Yeah, just say. Yeah. <laughs> just say. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> just, just putting a little Metatronian pitch out there. <laughs> Archangel Shemuel. That's all. Uh, <laughs> yeah all right girl you ready to take us out yes and so um 
if you need help with protection, like I said in the video, I have a protection course. The link will be in the bio in the description. Um, if you need if you need to learn and you want to learn about protecting your energy, setting your energetic boundaries, not letting these negative entities, because right now we've been having spiritual warfare right now. We've been feeling this spiritual energy. We've been feeling it. I don't care if you're awake or not awake or whatever else you want to call it. We've been feeling it on some kind of level. So it's very important mm -hmm. it's time that we're in to be able to hold your energy, hold your vibration and not let other energies or entities mess with that energy so i have a protection course and that's available with the link in the bio and in that course you get a free coaching session with me so at the end of everything that you learn you get a coaching session with me to be able to implement making sure you're implementing all the tools that you learn so you can be able to protect your energy and set those boundaries so that would be in the bio and make sure you take us off with the twin flame twin flame compilation book we're still looking for authors and the website is up. It is uh, kasaliving.net, A-K-A-S-A, -A living in great big capital letters, dot net. And um, there is um, a place there about the publishing company. The publishing company is solely there to support the nonprofit. Um, we are essentially self-publishing is what it is. Um, we don't own the rights to your book. That is not our intent but we are there to support you as a self-publishing uh, and there's protection with that, but there's also by self-publishing with us, you get all kinds of coaching and energetic support. And there, there's just so many benefits to self-publishing with us and that particular company, everything gets donated to the nonprofit. So to continue the work we're doing, because what I do, I just do. And so, um, so everything gets donated to the nonprofit. So, the um, Twin Flame compilation video is there, um, so you can watch it and see all the things that come with that. But you get to do a book without having to write a whole book because there's going to be a whole lot of other people in it. And all the other authors are going to have an energetic plan for the book. So there's not going to be one plan for how the book going to be out there in the world, but there's going to be 20, 25 plans for how the book's going to be out there in the world. So that makes it energetically exponential for you. And so there's, there's so many good reasons to do this. And it is not going to be, um, yes, it is a book you pay to be in. Compilation books, that's how they work. But um, it's not a book you're going to pay to be in and it be an absorbent fee. It's going to be one that is affordable because that is also the goal. A, a Kesa living is for um, the vocalization of, of what it is we all have to say. It is a place to vocalize because that is where existence was spoken into being in Akasha. And so um, it is the, the publishing company is meant to be an affordable place for more vocalization. So it's a place for authors to get their word out. And so it's, it's not meant to be an exorbitant fee. It, it's going to be affordable for you. Um, so please do. You get benefits too because you get coaching. Yeah. Which a lot of publishing doesn't do. So yeah. 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 The coaching you get with us, the attention you get from us, the time you get from us. Um, and then the, the front end, back end plan, it's you learn how to make the book your business. That's what I mean by the energetic part of it is, do you want to do you want to do speaking engagements? Do you do want to do workshops? Do you just want to be in the book and and sign some books at your local bookstore? You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you do, you want to be anonymous and nobody really know who you are. We can show you how, how to energetically do that. You know, it is whatever works for you energetically. Do you feel the need to get your story out, but you want to do it privately? You know, I mean, it's got to be about writing the right book at the right time in the right way for the right reason. And that's, that's what the energy management of it is. So it resonates to the right readers and you form the, the positive energy loop. And so that that's what it's about. And that's, that's what a case of, a case of publishing is about. And um, so, yeah, so we're all excited about that too. So that's, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that part too. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, girl. Well, I love you. We love you guys. Peace, love, my twin flame, my spirit guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. Can't wait until next Tuesday. <laughs> I know. I know. Bye. -bye. <laughs>